Look, 19 is an anthem, okay? And I think it's an anthem because it provided an I get it moment to a fundamentally fair and decent society. I mean, when, when they, the boys came home from Vietnam, they came home to a bitterly divided society about that war and they didn't return as heroes and we shunned them. That's, that's the bitter, hard truth about it. And I think, I was, I think we're all conf very confused about, about our response to Vietnam veterans and the war, but Australians respond best to stories. And I was only 19 was a story. At that time, I remember there were, there were royal commissions and there was, you know, university studies and parliamentary inquiries and all that sort of stuff into the, the, the state of our Vietnam veterans. And they were all excellent pieces of work and very important, but they didn't move Australia. And I think Australians heard that story and they said to themselves, I get it, I get it now. You know, so that's, I, that, that's why I think it's an anthem because it was an I get it moment. I always wanted to write a song about Vietnam and Vietnam veterans because it really was a case of there, but for the grace of God go I. I was of that age that, you know, as a young bloke in Australia in the 60s, Vietnam was actually on my horizon. It was a reality, it was a possibility. Um, as it happened, uh, mercifully, I didn't go, but I had mates who did go, they came back, and I saw those blokes, you know, fundamentally altered, you know, fundamentally altered in a, in a not, not in a good way. But I didn't want to write a song about them and the war and that whole mess from my memories of um, television reports and what I read in the newspaper. I met my brother-in-law, Mick Storen, learned that he had been in Vietnam. I learned that he'd been in a mine incident and on a whim, you know, really on the wings of a six pack one night, I asked him whether I could interview him and whether he would tell me his story because I wanted to write the song. And he had a couple of conditions, um, which I happily agreed to. So I interviewed him one, one night um, and I taped the conversation we had. I listened to those tapes for weeks and weeks and months and months. I mean, 19 was one of those songs that just was written, came barreling down my arm like it had already been written. I think the, 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 the fundamental power of the song is that it's true, you know, um, and Vietnam veterans will tell you that I got the detail right. And it's the detail that gives the song the credibility. It's the detail that points the, the sign to the meaning and what we can learn from it. I mean, there were, there were, for a long time, there were Vietnam veterans who actually believed I was in Vietnam with them and I wasn't. You know, what I did do was listen very, very hard to Mick Storen's story and I suppose bolt on my own experiences backpacking through Asia and sculpted that song. I mean, look, I think music can be a tremendously powerful and tremendously healing force. And the more musicians, the greater the healing, the greater the power. Um, and I am totally confident that Chris and Bill and all the musicians will work together to encapsulate that song and not diminish the song by, you know, the tsunami of an orchestra. Both of those guys are really smart and they get it. You know, so I think it'll be tremendously exciting to to hear how they can weave the power and the dynamic, you know, and that intensity that comes from an orchestra into an emotional narrative like 19. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Look, 19 is one of those songs that you can't just go on automatic pilot. You can't press play, you know, you have to perform it like it's the first time you performed it and you have to perform it like you mean it. Because the song demands it of whoever performs it, but also you have to perform it like you mean it for, for veterans. You know, it's tremendously important to veterans it, and, and you have to, you know, respect the song, respect them. In recent times, in the COVID-19 times, um, lots of people, you know, got their guitars and got on Facebook and YouTube and did COVID-19 versions of I Was Only 19, which is pretty obvious. And I got a pretty good sense of humour, but I got pretty grumpy about it and I asked people to stop because 
I have stood sentinel over that song for the decades that it's been in existence. Not for me, but for the veterans to whom it means so much. Look, I think, I think the, the thing about 19 and building a bridge between you know, a, di a bitterly divided Australian society and the veterans was something that we, we had to learn. And, what, and, and 19, I think, helped us learn that. That is that you can, you know, protest a war that our government gets us into, if that's what your conscience demands of you, but you must always respect and honour the men and women that our government send to fight that war. And that's a distinction that we hadn't actually made until the aftermath of the Vietnam War. And I am happy and proud to think that I was only 19, played a, a small part in that reconciliation. But I think the story in its simplicity and its detail and its compassion helped us understand and helped us not to blame the soldiers and the men and women of the Army, Navy and Air Force that we sent over to Vietnam. It helped us understand that there is a distinction between idiotic government decisions and the humanness of a soldier or an airman or a sailor in a combat situation. I am delighted and honoured beyond measure that 19 has been chosen to be a part of this requiem. Absolutely. I'm, it's very exciting and, you know, I'm, I'm honoured, deeply honoured. Well, I think one of the most powerful stories I heard about a Vietnam veteran's response to why I was only 19 was late in about 2009, 2010, I met a, a, an army major, an old guy who'd been in Vietnam and was approaching retirement. And when I met, met him, it was like he was meeting Bob Dylan. It was embarrassing, you know, and he had, I was only 19 was his ringtone on his phone. Anyway, it turns out he told me the story about when he, he first heard I was only 19. He'd left Vietnam, he'd been demobbed, and they said, just go home and try, you know, recreate your life and don't tell anybody you'd been to Vietnam. Anyway, he's up in Queensland in the sort of the hinterlands and he was said he was driving around and he heard this song. Anyway, he pulled over to the verge and he sat and he listened and he said, I listened to this song and then I cried. And then he said, my first thought was those bastards have been lying to me because he'd been having lots of issues following um, his departure from the army and his, his year in Vietnam, you know, he had the rashes and he went to the doctor and he, he said, you know, I've got these rashes. What, what's, what's, what's going on? And the doctor said, oh, your uh, wife probably uses a bit too much or the wrong detergent when she washes your clothes. So, so get her to change it and not use so much. And then he went back and said, I can't sleep, you know. Oh, well, you drink too much coffee before you at night and you need to maybe do a bit more exercise. Uh, and then he said, and my toenails, they fall out. And the doctor said, oh, you've got, you know, athlete's foot. So every symptom that he had, which we now understand as being either post-traumatic stress disorder or something that was, uh, um, that emerged from the exposure to insecticides and herbicides, the doctor disaggregated them and looked at them discreetly and dismissed them, right? But then when he realised that he'd been lied to, he also realised that here's a guy who's told my story in minute detail. So I'm not on my own. So then he went out and he found other Vietnam veterans. And he said, have you heard that song from that bloke, you know? And, uh, and I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, who is that guy, man? You know, like, it's like that's, that's just unbelievable. That's just like, that's, that's, that's us, that's our story. And of course, that started the movement because they got together and then they started to swap their stories and share their experiences and realise they weren't on their own. And it sort of, it was a gal, it was like the, the linking glue, you know, the linkage between all of these little groups of disparate vet, veterans from all, you know, hidden away all over Australia, you know, realised that they weren't alone, you know. So if I 
have done one thing in my life, one thing in my life that I'm really proud of and really grateful that I was chosen to deliver to Australia. It was I was only 19 because it helped bring them home and it helped us understand that you've got to honour and respect the men and women that a government send to fight a war even though you might bitterly oppose the war.